Hello again everyone, welcome back to a new session of Microtech Canada's Toddler Tutorials. As we approach the end of Module 1 for the MTCNA course, we each need to set up a home lab network for ourselves so that we can put into practice what we learn. In this video, we're going to teach you the first of four main steps of establishing this lab network, which is setting up the identity of the class access point. The minimum requirement for creating such a network is having a laptop and two Microtik devices that at least have three Ethernet ports and a wireless interface. By referring to the MTCNA course page on our website, you can review and acquire our recommended Microtik devices that can be used in your home lab. In case you also wish to run and learn about the dude monitoring utility, you will also need a third device in your network. First, Let's go over the diagram that illustrates the basic two-device lab network without the dude monitoring utility. As you can see, we first have one Microtik router that is connected to our main home or office internet switch via a LAN cable network on its Ethernet port number 1. We'll call this the class access point, the class AP or R1. Next, we have a wireless connection between the class AP and our second Microtik router, which we'll know as the trainee router or R2. Note that we will form a small subnetwork between these two routers. So in fact, the overall wireless connection between the class AP and the trainee router is formed by two wireless connections. And third, we have a cable connection from Ethernet port number one of the trainee router to the trainee laptop that will complete our basic home lab network for the MTCNA course. Sounds simple enough, doesn't it? Well, that's because it is simple. And to make things easy for you, we're going to provide you with a step-by-step -step guideline on how to set up your lab. In this network design, you will regard the class AP as your ISP gateway, which is actually managed by the trainer when you attend in-person classes. The main goal of the MTCNA course is to learn how to manage and configure the trainee router, and we will not be making much changes to the class AP after this initial setup. Now, as a very first step and to facilitate the future configuration and monitoring of our network, we need to set up the identity of our class access point. As mentioned in previous tutorials, the Ethernet port number one on most Microtik devices is secured by a default firewall. On the other hand, Ethernet ports number two to N are bridged and we can connect our LAN cable to one of these ports for this one-time initial configuration of the class AP. As you are probably aware, we'll be using Winbox as the main management utility for our Microtik devices. And in case you're not familiar with Winbox, you can refer to our previous videos for a more detailed introduction to this software. For our very first connection to a new Microtik device, we'll use the device's MAC address with admin as the username and no password. Once we make our first connection, we'll click on the Remove Configuration button on this pop-up window so that we can wipe the default configuration of our router and customize our device settings, since the goal is to set up our device from scratch. In case you did not see the default configuration pop-up, that means that your device has been previously accessed and may carry some configurations. To reverse those possible settings, Simply refer to the System menu and the Reset Configuration submenu and reset your device by choosing the No Default Configuration option so that your device reboots and at the same time removes the default configuration. As previously mentioned, to facilitate device identification and troubleshooting, we first need to set the name of our device. To do so, refer to the System menu and the Identity submenu to set the name of this router to R1 Class AP. Once you click OK, you can see that the chosen name appears at the top of the window. The next step is to name each of the interfaces that we're using. Why? Because doing so will facilitate future data documentation as well as the monitoring and troubleshooting of our network. By referring to the Interfaces menu, you can find your active interfaces, and by double-clicking on each interface, you can see and change its information. Since we'll be using our Ethernet 1 to connect to the Internet, we'll name Ethernet 1 to Ether 1 to Internet. Moreover, if you remember from the network diagram, we will be using the wireless interface of this access point to connect to the trainee router. 
Therefore, we'll also change the name of the wireless interface to WLAN1 to class. Once the name has been changed, we need to enable the wireless interface as well, which can be done by selecting the WLAN interface and enabling it using the tick button here. You can easily see that the wireless interface has now been turned on. In case you have a dual band wireless hardware, such as the HAP AC Lite, you will have two wireless interfaces in this table. For simplicity, we recommend that you use the first WLAN interface for this network setup. On a similar note, when we discuss Ethernet or wireless interfaces, we're talking about the physical layer of a communication network. What is the physical layer, you might wonder? Well, to understand the flow of data in a communication system, we have what we call the Open Systems Interconnection or OSI model. The OSI model is comprised of two main parts, namely media layers and host layers. Media layers are of three kinds, physical, data link, and network. Host layers include four types, namely transport, session, presentation, and application. The units of delivering data in the physical layer include bits and symbols. In the second layer, data units are in the form of frames, and in the third layer, data flows in the form of packets. The function of the physical layer is to send and receive raw data over a physical medium. The second layer, that is the data link layer, is in charge of the reliable transmission of data frames between two nodes connected by a physical layer. And the network layer is used to structure and manage a network with a number of different nodes by using protocols such as addressing, routing, traffic control, and so on. Ethernet ports and wireless interfaces are instances of the physical layer. When we talk about the MAC addresses of our devices, we're talking about the second or the data link layer. And when we assign an IP address to a device, we're dealing with the third layer of this model. Okay, that's it for this video. So far, we have set up the identity of our router as well as the names of the Ethernet and wireless interfaces that we'll be using. In the next tutorial, we'll talk about the required DHCP client for the class access point, the concept of broadcast domains, and the first half of the wireless connection needed to connect to the trainee router. If you have questions about this network up to this point, write them in the comments section. Also, make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you do not miss the rest of this training. Take very good care of yourselves, and we'll see you in the next episode.